Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us in today's episode of BioWiz podcast, Meet the Wizard. I am Elizabeth, and I am happy to be here today with Levi Shapiro, founder of M Health Israel. Hi, Levi. How are you? Great. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for being here. Levi, I would like to start by asking you what we are asking all our guests here. Could you please tell us a little bit more about your journey and what led you to where you are today? Sure. Um, like many people, uh, sometimes the journey happens uh, unexpectedly. Uh, I was working for a venture fund. Uh, the fund did not uh, raise another fund. And so I sought uh, to do the next thing and found that there was a real interest among investors for digital health. And so um, about eight years ago, I embarked on trying to learn more and create um, some critical mass in Israel around digital health. Uh, and in order to do that, I decided, I, feel, I thought perhaps I could create a nonprofit and uh, activate the community. Israel has a very robust technology community. Um, at the time, there was less awareness about health technology and the attractiveness of healthcare um, in terms of applying technical skills. I created a community. The community has grown um, uh, incrementally, but after about seven years, it's now 8,500 members um, and some you know, real wins over that period. And most importantly, there's a feeling of solidarity within the community that uh, we're playing a, a key role in helping to transform healthcare. Okay, so let's go back a, a little bit. When you're talking about the community, that would be M Health Israel. Could you let us know what is going on there? Sure. Um, uh, the role of a community is to uh, bring out the skills and talents of uh, the members. So Israel has quite a bit of technical talent. Um, the challenge in healthcare is uh, adjusting that healthcare, um, adjusting that talent to address healthcare problems that are mostly outside of Israel. Uh, and so there is a great deal of education involved. There's a great deal of bridging um, across the um, sort of global uh, healthcare technology sector. Um, and in order to do that, lots of um, co-development projects uh, on behalf of global multinationals, lots of challenges and sort of special activities, lots of education, a lot of education, typically one or two educational events monthly, um, and then taking our show on the road. So um, generally a couple of times a year, we would take a delegation to some prominent industry event. Um, and slowly that technical talent is transformed into commercial expertise. And that creates a stronger um, ecology of uh, healthcare technology startup community. This is where we are, that at this point, compared to five, seven years ago, um, early stage companies have a lot more expertise. Our educational activities, our uh, connection is helpful. And we're happy to see that there's been a number of companies um, doing very well. What do you bring to, to those uh, early stage companies, uh, which, are, which is specific to, to the community? Right. Healthcare is quite different than other industries. Um, getting paid is less clear. Uh, there's typically more intermediaries involved. And um, uh, many companies, not just Israeli, but many companies master the technology aspect um, and then find themselves encountering difficulties on the commercial side. So a lot of what we're trying to do is um, provide best practices, provide expertise and insights that helps companies that already solve the technology issue, um, what 
what we can offer is helping them uh, on the commercial side. That means exposing them to some global uh, key players. Uh, it means sharing sort of um, uh, do's and don'ts in the form of educational uh, elements, um, helping the whole community reach a, a, another level of commercial expertise at a neutral level. That's very helpful. <laughs> Uh, let's discuss a little bit more the industries themselves of M Health, E Health. Uh, could you explain to us what are the biggest challenges as of today when it comes to those industries? The industry uh, healthcare is enormous. Um, generally, in the OECD, it's around uh, 13% of GDP. In the United States, it's more than 18% of GDP. That's four trillion plus dollars. It's a very, very large industry um, and quite fragmented, particularly in the United States. So the United States accounts for about 48%, roughly half of global healthcare spend. That means most early stage companies, including Israeli early stage companies, are trying to solve American healthcare problems. Whether we like it or not, the American healthcare system subsidizes the rest of the world because the margins are so high, it allows the rest of the world to uh, basically enjoy a more um, cost efficient health care. So uh, that is really the direction for a lot of the early stage companies. And there's such fragmentation um, just within the United States that um, digital, can help improve efficiencies, reduce costs, and demonstrate uh, basically um, more cost-efficient uh, health outcomes. That's the goal of digital. Digital is not blowing up the existing healthcare system. Digital is bringing efficiency and enhancing the existing expertise and systems to be more efficient and um, more focused on patient outcomes. And how does the market respond to that? Because that's all very new, very surprising, maybe sometimes even frightening when it comes to health to include digitalization to those industries. Uh, there's been literally um, as much transformation in health over the last five, 10 years as any industry um, at all. So for example, uh, about 10 years ago, the Affordable Care Act was a change in regulation in the United States. And that just opened the floodgates for a lot of investments by health systems or hospitals to suddenly transform their own health uh, information uh, systems. The response was um, very enthusiastic in the beginning, um, as many new programs can be then they're encountered a great deal of inertia because uh, introducing some sort of um, uh, tool or diagnostic uh, or software perhaps is low friction, but then changing workflow and process and billing, these are real fundamental changes and legacy players are not happy about changes. So um, initially there was a tremendous amount of euphoria, uh, particularly uh, applying big data towards personalizing uh, the experience of the patient, which was not previously something that was really possible. Um, so the big sort of uh, technology trigger over the last five years has been big data computing in the cloud to enable um, tools and diagnostics that are very personalized and improving the quality of care. But you know, the real challenge is um, the, as I said, there's a, an existing way of doing things and um, it's not easy to dislodge those legacy market leaders. And so many really good technologies struggle in the growth revenue stage. 
Um, you know, we track at M Health Israel, we're tracking uh, the sector. There's about 600 plus Israeli digital health companies. There's about 650 uh, or 700 um, medical device companies. Um, there is about three, 400 biopharma companies here in Israel. And only 6% are earning $20 million or more in revenue by our count. Wow. You know, that means 94% of companies are, are really struggling to kind of hit scale. Um, and that's really the challenge and the opportunity. Uh, so we're seeing tremendous um, experimentation, but fundamental change is taking time. I do want to take another minute that the real success stories in digital health are sort of systemic. Um, systemic means looking at what's really broken and trying to transform that. And we've seen a number of IPOs in 2020, now 2021. Um, Israeli companies have uh, tended to be more kind of point solutions uh, and therefore M&A targets. Mm -hmm. um, so my hope is that uh, we'll see more Israeli companies undertaking the real systemic change within the $4 trillion health care industry in the U.S., because Lord knows we, we definitely need to see that. What is missing to get there? What's missing is essentially undertaking the really big problem and uh, investing the time and the human and financial resources uh, and the necessary expertise to address that problem. So perhaps the most successful uh, recent exit of Israeli digital health has been American Well, founded by um, uh, a couple of Israelis. And that is a decade long project. That was not an overnight sensation. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they invested, they bought uh, and acquired um, an amazing video technology company, for example, and built a great solution. And then when the market was ready for telehealth at scale, then American Well became a very attractive, uh, uh, basically, IPO uh, profile. That's my point, is uh, healthcare is not like some other, you know, making a, uh, a game for the iPhone in which you get instant feedback from the market. And if it's not working, you simply do, um, you know, another version. Uh, that's not healthcare. Healthcare is a very long process. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, credibility building, um, a lot of market feedback, um, and frankly, a lot of patience. So, uh, you know, these are qualities that are sort of less synonymous with Israeli uh, technology investment and even Israeli technology um, founders. But we're seeing companies ra raise Series C, Series D, uh, and having the patience to really um, pursue sometimes dead ends and sometimes um, slow build kind of um, systemic change. Then this is what we need to see more of. There's more capital addressing health technology in Israel uh, than ever before, substantially more. And I think that is a real key ingredient that companies that sort of prove that they have um, a product market fit, they're going to be able to raise money in Tel Aviv, that, uh, whereas in the past, they would have had to raise that money somewhere else. Mm -hmm. so uh, and there's a very limited pool of Israeli investors that have seen the life cycle of a digital health startup company from you know, first money in to IPO. And I think, um, you know, the whole ecology is um, maturing, including the investment community. So, um, you know, there's, there's, uh, we're getting to that place in the cycle where you're really going to see some interesting outcomes um, uh, really this year. 
So what would you say are exactly those outcomes based on all these uh, consideration, all these ingredients and the, the, the vision of the market that you can see from the side of the companies, of the investors, the dynamic of the market itself? What would you say are tomorrow's perspective when it comes to healthcare, digital healthcare, digitalization of healthcare? Right. Um, swing for the home run is my suggestion. That um, point solutions are very interesting uh, and it's easy to obtain uh, grant money and seed money, but the US health system is broken. Um, you know, there's an administration that really wants to fix it. And so what I would suggest to um, early stage teams, go for the really big problem. It won't be easy, but um, you know, this is the holy grail. Um, there's no shortcuts, but you know, the opportunity uh, and the capital is, is, is tangible. So uh, I think you're gonna see more um, later stage rounds, companies that sort of demonstrate that their undertaking um, meets a real need and they may be able to raise uh, series C and sort of later stage capital that's necessary to market to the 5,200 US health systems, um, you know, that, that sort of thing. It's very exciting. Um, but this is very different than a lot of other industries. It's not a quick buck. That's for sure. Um, I, I think we've seen this, you know, this uh, epidemic, this pandemic was uh, a real uh, turning point in terms of the possible, that when we apply um, sort of know-how and uh, technology, we really can solve the big problem. Uh, and, and there's plenty of capital that's looking in that direction. That's great. So that's very promising for the future of, uh, of healthcare, of digital healthcare. And uh, we are waiting to see. And uh, we will be very patient because patience is here, the keywords, and to see uh, all the fruits coming out of it, hopefully very soon. Thank you so much, Levi, for being here with us. It was a pleasure. I, I, I love the program and I'm very pleased to be one of the guests. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.